Hey everybody, I'm Dio Gen Z, and today I'm your guest host for this Matt's Let's Play of Pokemon Red. So we are going to continue onward, and I'll tell you as we do what our idea was here. We were talking last night, we said, wouldn't it be funny if we did a partial blind run on each other's post-production LP? Because right now I'm recording the Black Walkthrough on my channel, Spong Mario, and with that DS emulator, it only runs at 80% when I'm recording. So it forces me to always do post-commentary. So I thought it would be kind of a goof if we went in as a blind run and just commentated on each other's footage. So I didn't play this, this was all Matt, but I'm here to commentate and wage my professional Pokemon opinion against his efforts. So let's see how he stands up against Misty, the second gym leader in the Kanto region. It's so funny looking at her sprite because it looks nothing like her. Yeah, okay, her sprite there looks like herself, but her out in the uh, main world sprite it looks like just a regular trainer. So it looks like he went with the Oddish. <laughs> Love the nickname, by the way, Odd Dish. It's excellent. If you don't have yourself an Oddish, though, another option you could go for is catching a Pikachu in Viridian Forest earlier on. However, they are kind of rare, so if you're not patient, Oddish could be your best bet. Before coming here with any Pokémon, though, I highly recommend going north and checking out Nugget Bridge for some great experience points. Staryu shouldn't be too much of a problem, but Misty's next Pokémon is a Biatch! One of the best walls in the metagame today. Actually, I don't know if it still stands up that way in 5th generation, but I remember in 4th gen, with all of its... Yeah, I can't believe Misty's using that either. I'll get onto that next, but um, Starmie has some great barrier defenses, and its EVs are fit for whittling down your health and just cock-blocking you with its Whirl of Star action. But what I was going to say next is that I don't recall back in my classic red ever seeing any of the gym leaders use the X items, like X attack, X defend, and Misty used them twice. Pretty crazy. I didn't think the game did that, but maybe my memory's faulty. Come on, you odd dish. Brace the tackle! Uh, it's getting close. Who will win? I'm thinking odd dish has this one in the bag, though. Yep, your tackles won't do anything. Plus, worst comes to worst, he could just change out. But he's got this one in the bag. Matt 2, Misty none. Alright, we have one, and grew to level 19. But will he learn the sleep powder? I wonder. Nope. Yep. Keeping the poison powder, interesting choice. Usually I would do the opposite there. I kind of like getting many turns on my opponents. And if I recall, the sleep mechanic in the first games were kind of broken. I think you could kind of spam sleeping and your opponent would be perpetually in La La Land. But it's always been my preference to just put them to sleep so I can wail on them with massive attacks. So next we can continue onward. After healing up the Pokemon Center, we're going to check to see if anyone can learn Bubble Beam. Uh, hmm, Rattrapa can, but unlike the 5th generation in black and white, TMs will dissolve if you use them once. They're not unlimited. A very good feature that they added, and it's a surprising thing that it took them so long to figure it out that, hey, people don't want to constantly trade just to get one move. The Team Rocket ravaged home of this dude. Apparently Diglett went nuts in there and burrowed on through. But what I don't understand is if you go back to that area, you see footprints, or handprints. Diglett comes out of the ground? <laughs> I never knew. Matt was telling me before he handed me this recording that he raised his Oddish here. Geo man, dude. <laughs> he raised his Oddish here real quick to get Absorb. And that's what won him this match. So daycare is important, especially if you want to train a team that is multifaceted and you don't feel like wasting all your experience on a Magikarp. 
And especially with Magikarp, because you can't really do anything for until level 20, right? And then evolve into Gyarados. Or learn Tackle and then try building up experience faster that way. It's funny, Matt definitely overuses the bike. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm too lazy to set it to select. <laughs> That's more or less the case all the time. Yeah, he doesn't need to go to the Pokemon Center because we healed up and didn't face anybody. But if you did face those trainers on the route, I believe the one that was hiding in the grass had a Butterfree, if I remember. And then I think the two that were talking to each other, one had a Squirtle, which was significant because I didn't think that anyone else received Pokemon from Professor Oak. But apparently he does. He gives them out like hotcakes. Just the three Pokemon that you see on the borders. And the borders is kind of my signature thing, guys. I like to do that with all my Pokemon walkthroughs. It's something that I started off in my crystal walkthrough and since then I've been digging it so I've been going ahead along with it and it's cool because you can see the Game Boy color as the resolution was supposed to be and it doesn't make all the uh, graphics glitched and stretched out something cool about Vermilion City specifically this dock right here that we're walking out to to the SSN or for short SAN is that if you trade with someone that has a Pokemon knowing cut and you don't go onto this boat, which is the main purpose of it being here, so you can get the TM cut, TM01, and then continue on with your journey, but when you do that, the boat unfortunately leaves and then it locks you out of the dock. So instead, take that traded Pokemon, go on your journey with that, don't come to the SSN. Yeah, you're going to miss some experience points, but if you've got a strong enough team, you shouldn't have a problem. Plus, you got to remember, Pokemon that are traded grow faster than those you raise on your own. So that traded Pokemon with Cut could probably be a vital part of your team as a powerhouse. But once you go to Fuchsia City, get the TM Surf in Safari Zone and beat the gym leader there, I think it's Koga still, right? Yeah, Koga doesn't leave the gym and go to the Elite Four until Crystal or uh, Gold and Silver. And come back here when you have Surf. Then surf off to the little piece of dock that allows you to see water. Go to the right, and you'll notice a pickup truck on some land. It's very interesting, because I don't think I've seen any formal interviews with Nintendo explaining what's up with the pickup truck, but they finally instituted some real car vehicles and other mass transit trucks in black and white, but you don't interact with them, you just see them in the background and over your head with bridges. But it's cool. If you think about it, Pokemon is a very environmentally friendly game. It tells trainers to go on a journey on foot. Don't use cars. Sure, you can use a bike, because that's healthy. It's a good game for any up-and-coming Captain Planets out there. Something else I also like to do in my walkthroughs is speed up battles. The reason for this is because on my channel I have a 15 minute limit. I know Matt doesn't have one on his, but still I get used to the fast paced battles and especially now <laughs> seeing Pokemon move and now compared to them not moving, just being still there, it's kind of funny. So um, we speed these up and I like to put them to music and still commentate over them. So if there's any specific tips I want to point out, you guys can hear it. But the music that you're hearing is by my friend Star Tropics King and you can check out his channel below in the description box. So we are totally owning with this penis right now. Nothing better than a grounded penis, right? I don't know. Actually, no. Hmm. Ow! No! Ooh, ow! Never mind. I'm thinking grounded up like in a meat grinder. Ah! Never mind. There's many things better than a grounded up penis. Ah, Diglett. You know, don't search Diglett or Doug Trio without Google Safe Search on. You'll see some pretty disturbing pictures of, um, yeah, I won't even say, but don't do it! It's, uh, I don't recommend it. It will scar you for life. And you'll never look at that penis Pokemon the same again. I remember back in the anime when, uh, Ash and his friends happened upon that construction site, and the Diglett were just basically fucking everything up and like, Diglett dig, Diglett dig, Diglett dig! I thought it was so funny because they were so adorable, high-pitched, and just moving shit around, and everybody was getting frustrated, like, what the hell? But that's their natural habitat. I sometimes wish that nature around here in the real world could act in such a way. 
But I suppose it does in the form of natural disasters, but it's not a vengeance thing, it's just something that happens. But it would be cool if you uh, came across a deer, you start trying to build a house, and he's like, FUCK YOUR HOUSE! And then comes and kicks you in the face. Deer kick. Or just jumps into your windshield, even though your car's parked. And he's like, HA! Repair that damage, bitch! Now let's see you have enough money to finish that house in my environment. Yep, that would be awesome. But, unfortunately, we only have Deerling and Sawbuck. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with Pokemon, but back on my channel, Spong Mario, that's my mainstay. That's what I came onto YouTube for. Well, actually, not initially. Initially, it was Nintendo Radio, but I transformed it into a Pokemon LP channel and other things. You know, I share that channel with Vladimir Z, just in case you're wondering. And he's been a guest on plenty of Matt's LPs in the past, but this is the first time I'm making an entry. And, um, yeah, is this the first Pokemon game that he's done? I don't know. I think it is the first Pokemon game he's LP'd on his channel. And unfortunately, the recording cuts out before we get the TM. But I'll just tell you that if you continue down that hallway, after talking to this guy, who has seen so many Pokemon around the world, like Snorlax! Uh, that will just register it in your Pokedex, so you can find it. But if you continue down that hall, you'll eventually meet your rival. I named him Gary, I don't know what Matt named him. And then just go north, and that will be the captain's chamber. Just talk to him, rub his tummy, to make him feel better about being seasick. And he'll give you a TM. Thank you for rubbing my belly. You're a complete stranger, but your touch has magically healed me. Now go cut shit up. Go knock out some trays. So, with that, we'll finish up this super speed battle. Yeah, this will be no problem. All these Fisher dudes are just nom nom points for Oddish. Odd dish right now. Not very effective, right? Because it's poison, so. Here it would be better to have a Pikachu. But it's weird. Even though Tentacool. Yeah, actually, never mind. They do have bubbles sometimes, but. Usually when I see Tentacool in the old games, they only use Supersonic, Poison Sting, Acid. I noticed that a lot in uh, the sea leading up to Sea and Wood City in the Crystal Walkthrough. So many Tentacool and Tentacruel dropping acid out in the ocean. It's a psychotropic event. So, I may see you guys in the future in another episode, but if you want to see more of me, head on to Spong Mario. I've been Dio Gen Z, and this has been a blast.